This video is for Atomic Radius, ELR 8.2. In this video, I'm going to be showing you what an atomic radius is and how scientists determine what that is. Number two, how, what happens to the radius as you move across the period on a periodic table, so from left to right. And finally, what happens to the radius as you move down, so from top to bottom, on a group or family. Some of the vocab that you're going to need, this should be going in the vocab box on your week handout, are the following words. You're going to need to know atomic radius, period, group, proton, electron, and energy shell. So the last couple of words on here, or actually all but the first, are words that we've already talked about in class before, but you're going to hear all of these as we go. So the first question, what is atomic radius and how is it found? Here's what it is. So in science, we have learned that there have been several models for atoms over the course of uh, chemical history, and the most experience you have is with a Bohr model, so this is kind of what it might look like. And in this terms, in these terms, radius is from the center of the nucleus out to the outer electron, and it's pretty straightforward, at least for what Bohr thought. But as we have since found out, electrons don't live in these perfectly neat little rows around the nucleus, they actually live in these clouds, and that is much harder to measure because it's all about probability. So what scientists have had to do is figure out a new method. So what they have done is actually something pretty clever. What they decided to do is they said, all right, well, what if we take two of these atoms and we bond them together, kind of like that, this is a rough sketch, and instead of measuring from the nucleus to the outside electron, because those are really hard to tell where they are, what if instead we measure from one nucleus to the other and then just divide that in half? That should be the radius um, on average. And so that's exactly what they did. So that's what atomic radius is and how we have found it. The second question is what happens as you move across a period? And so, let me get myself organized. As we move across a period, I want to spend time thinking about these elements. So I've just grabbed the second row off the periodic table, the second period. It starts with lithium and goes all the way up to fluorine. I've left off the noble gas for this one because um, I just want to stick with these elements because fluorine has a lot to do with something called electronegativity that we're going to talk about later. So here's where we're going to look at first. As you move across the period, first thing you have to do is you have to have a frame of reference. So I've drawn a Bohr model for lithium. And in the Bohr model, the things that we care about when it comes to size are the protons and the electrons. Since we're measuring from protons to the outer ring, what we're really talking about is how hard are these protons pulling on those electrons to force them to squeeze in. So with lithium, there are only three protons and three electrons. There's some charge of attraction between those two things, but generally lithium is a pretty big atom. So I've got down three protons are pulling. As we move across the periodic table down to fluorine, though, fluorine has a lot more protons, which means a lot more pull. So what this model would look like is this. Way more protons are going to exert a lot more force on those electrons to suck them in closer to the nucleus. So more protons pulling means a smaller atom. It's a little bit counterintuitive. You might be thinking, oh, if you're adding electrons and protons as you're going across, that sounds like a bigger atom, but it's not. Those protons and electrons are actually pulling way harder on each other down here, which means that it's making it sucked in and closer together. So, in summary, as you add protons, there's a greater amount of pull on those electrons, and they get closer to the nucleus. Part three looks like this. What happens when we move down a group, otherwise known as a family or a column? So, again, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a frame of reference. We're going to start with these guys. We're going to start with lithium again, and this time we're going to move down to rubidium in this first column on the periodic table. So for lithium, again, I have the Bohr model, and on that Bohr model, just the same as the previous page, you've got the protons and the electrons, and we're comparing it now to as we go down the column. So as you have known from class, as we go down the rows, the, really what you're adding is another ring of electrons and also a bunch more protons. So we've got to think about how those two things are going to interact with each other going this direction. So this time we're adding shells. We're also adding, and we're also adding protons, but here's the thing that you have to keep in mind. 
as you add more shells onto the outside, more and more shells going out, you have to remember that there are still electrons on the inside shells, and those electrons are blocking the protons. So kind of think of it like, as I add another ring around this, those protons are going to have a harder time seeing the electrons on the outside because they're being blocked by the ones on the inside. And that, that blocking makes for some interesting physics. So here's, let's take a look at rubidium. For rubidium, it is way, way, way bigger. And that's because we've added a lot more rings. We were at two rings on lithium. Sodium has three, potassium has four. Rubidium has five rings, so that makes sense. Because we've added more rings, it's gotta get much larger. But I want you to think about these outside, this one outside electron. Think about all of the electrons it has to kind of see through in order to see the protons on the inside. Because there are all these electrons blocking its view, even though there are 37 protons in the center, they're having a harder time pulling on that electron on the outside because they're blocked. So in summary, as you add shells or energy levels, the atom grows. Additionally, protons are blocked by the many shells that you add on, which allow it to be bigger than you might think. What I need you to do going forward is a summary, and I've got a question for you. So write on your paper for the summary, what is the most important information from this video and why? And then the questions that I need you to grapple with are these. Which of the following two elements is bigger? And explain, explain how you know. So I've got lithium versus nitrogen. And then the second question is beryllium versus helium.